Good morning, Stampers. Happy Thursday, and welcome to Connect to Create. I'm Pat Fairless from Fairless Stamp and Flair. And if this is your first time visiting Connect to Create, um, it is a collaboration between myself and a good friend and fellow demonstrator, Kathy Andes from Simply Cards by Kathy. And it's our goal to come to you each week with a technique to show you how to do, or maybe a tip or a trick. Um, we will not normally make complete cards, but we will demonstrate the technique so that you can use it in your card making. So today I have a technique for you. It's called stained mosaic. And this is a technique that I did many, many years ago and kind of forgot about it and had not done it in let's say several years. So I pulled it out this past week, last week, and um, started practicing with it again. And so today I'm going to show you some of that thing, some of what I had forgotten and some tips and tricks too about how to use it. So let's go ahead and turn the camera down and get started. So again, it's called Stained Mosaic. And just to kind of keep it simple here, I put together a list of things that you will need in order to do this technique. Obviously you need a mosaic stamp and that is this. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but you need a stamp like that. Um, you need some Versamark ink, some clear embossing powder, a heat tool, and then you'll need some dark ink. Um, I will be using black memento. That's kind of what the tutorial I found out on what Call Stampers uh, recommended using. But I'm also going to show you some um, pieces that I made using other inks because I think it doesn't need to be just black memento. And then you'll need something to apply that ink, like a sponge dauber or whatever tool you prefer to use, and some paper towels to clean up your mess. But the first thing you need to get started is your focal point. So that can be an image that you stamp and die cut. Um, it can be many different things. But I'm going to give you a few hints about what kinds of images I found this past week tended to work best. But before we get to the image focal point, um, let me explain this mosaic stamp to you. It is made out of the scraps of rubber that come from our cling stamps. So when you get a new cling stamp, you know you have to push, punch out the, um, the stamps. And then this stamp is made out of these pieces that are around it. So when you punch out your, your stamp, you'll end up with something like this and you're going to use this and you'll cut it into pieces in different shapes and sizes and adhere it to some sort of a block. Now I used a, an acrylic block but you could also use a piece of wood if you don't want to tie up an acrylic block um, and you just want to make it permanent so that you don't have to recreate the stamp each and every time, which I would highly recommend you don't do. Um, and go ahead and use just a block of wood and you can use regular, any kind of adhesive, maybe a rubber glue to adhere your pieces to the, to the block of wood. If you use an acrylic block, you can use the cling that's on the, um, the same cling that we use on our stamps to hold them to our acrylic block. So my other hint here is, is that you want to keep, minimize the gaps. Uh, the larger the gap, when you color it, it's later over your image, the larger veining you're going to have in your mosaic. So keep them close together is my recommendation. Okay, so hopefully that's understood how you just need to make this stamp. Again, the size of this needs to be big enough to cover whatever image or focal point you're going to use. If you've got a big image, then you're going to want to make this larger. Um, and again, the smartest thing to do is probably make it larger. And then if you only need to use a portion of it 
for a smaller image, that's fine, but you're prepared and you don't have to go create another stamp the next time you um, want to try this technique. So start saving these things to make your, your block. And uh, it'll take a few stamp sets to get enough in order to make your your mosaic stamp, but you can collect them and just don't throw them away. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's. I'm going to make a focal point using this die cut from the um, corner, corner, what's it called? Countryside Corners dies. It's a new die set from the new annual catalog and it has all of these shapes that are with the rectangles with the corners cut off. So I'm going to be using the third largest. My recommendation is, is that you either die cut it before you stamp your image or stamp your image and then die cut it before you make the mosaic technique. So let's go ahead and do this because I'm using color and contour stamp set today. And I'm going to be using these stamps and the leaf. I did try it with this stamp set, and I will show you that. I'm calling it a blooper. Um, it didn't, I wasn't very happy with how this turned out. And when I show you, I will explain what I didn't like about it. So we're just going to start by stamping the outline image with black memento on here. And I'm using my piercing, piercing mat because this is a photopolymer stamp. So you get a little bit better image. Sometimes it's important. Sometimes it's depending on the surface that's underneath. Um, but it's a good habit to just when you're using a photopolymer stamp set, just to use your piercing mat or something with a little bit more give to it to get a better image. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some leaves in between here, but I don't want this little swirl or flourish on these leaves. I just want the main part of the leaf. And again, I will show you why when I show you that blooper. Um, so I'm just going to use my my Stampin' Right basic black marker to ink my stamp. You huff on it and then stamp it on your cardstock. Okay, and we're going to do that three times. This is a nice little tip technique that you can use. Use your markers to um, color your stamps and you can do multiple colors on your stamp before stamping. Just remember to huff on your stamp before you stamp to just re-moisten it a little bit. Probably with this simple of a stamp, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it's a good, it's a good habit to get into. It just, it just re-wets it a little bit. Particularly if you've got a more intricate image that you're coloring with multiple colors, um, that ink on your stamp from the marker will dry out. So, um, so that's that completes my black stamping. Let me clean this off here a minute on my chamois so it doesn't dry on there. Okay. And now we're going to add some color. And one of the hints I'm going to give you is when you're doing this technique, I found that solid images as opposed to line images seem to look better. And the brighter the colors and the more bold the images, um, the better it tended to look. So I am going to stamp one flower in blueberry bushel which we'll do the first one. I just got to figure out which my positioning is. This can be a little tricky to align. I usually look for this little double um, petal right here and then look for the double petal here. 
so I know how to align it. And I'm not going to try to do this perfectly. This is a demonstration on how to do the um, stain mosaic technique, not necessarily how to do the stamping, but I thought I'll just quickly stamp it for you. Clean my stamp again. And this color is one of the new returning colors, another of the new returning colors. This one is called Berry Burst. The blueberry bushel was also a returning color. Um, so these are some nice bright colors, which as I indicated, seem to work best with this particular technique. And the last color I'm gonna do is Coastal Cabana. Okay, now I can't see my little thingy, so now I gotta figure out where it is. It's over here. Not too important if I don't get it exactly right. Okay, so that's nice and bright and cheery. And I can set these aside. Now for my leaves, I'm gonna color them with granny apple green. And I'm just gonna do this very quickly. I'm not gonna do all the shading that we normally would do with our Stampin' Blends. I just wanna get some color on them. Um, that's a whole nother technique, is teaching how to color with blends, right? So I'm just gonna color them with one color here. And I'm using the, the light granny apple green. And don't be afraid when you're coloring to leave little white spots. Um, sometimes it adds a little bit of depth and interest. And I've got Daffodil Delight. This is Dark Daffodil Delight, just to add a little color in part of the centers here. And then around the flowers, I'm gonna color some sky. This is Pool Party. I am not going to color this carefully. Um, I'm going to leave white here and there, partially on purpose, partially because I just don't want to take the time to color this whole thing for you. Again, that's not really the point of the, the video today. Today it's all about how to do the stained mosaic technique. So. But it does seem, at least in my opinion, um, by adding this color in the background, it, um, it seemed to pop a little bit more when I had some color. So, okay, I wanna make sure this is dry. All right, so now we have our focal point colored and I'm gonna bring our mosaic stamp in that, that we made. And we will ink that up very well with Versamark. And you want to make sure that you get this well covered. You may have to pat your ink pad on here multiple times. I did re-ink my Versamark pad before I started this, so it is pretty juicy. Um, but we wanna make sure that's all very well covered with Versamark. And then I'm just going to stamp that right over the focal point. And we're gonna give it a good press. It's important to get this covered. in order for the technique to turn out well. This is where the Stamparatus would look really well, but I would hate to tie up one of my plates with um, the mosaic stamp. Now you can also rub this on here just to kind of make sure you've got those well inked on here. 
And now I'm going to bring my clear embossing powder. Now you saw I had my, my embossing buddy here. I could have wiped this with the embossing buddy because we're covering most everything except those fine little lines or gaps here between the stamp. It's not super critical. Um, the static isn't going to really hurt you. So I did not, I did not use my embossing buddy, but if you wanted to, you certainly could. It won't hurt anything. It's probably a good habit to get into. And I'm going to let this slide around. Kind of like if you were dusting, flowering a cake pan um, after you greased up your cake pan. You want to make sure it's getting in all those little spots. And I'm tapping off lightly because I want a lot of it to stay on here. And I doubt that you can see this, um, but the next thing we would do is heat emboss this. And by the magic of television, I have one already heat embossed. So you don't have to listen to my to my heat tool right now. Now our next step is, like I said, is to add some dark color ink over this. So I'm going to use Black Memento for this one. And I'm going to use a sponge dauber because that's what works well for me. It's easier to control and get as much ink as you want in those little gaps. Can you already see the gaps where the ink is going? That's how you now see your mosaic pattern. And that's why it's called stained mosaic. Okay, now the next step is to take a clean paper towel, lying over here, and buff this off because you, you want to get the ink that is on your embossing powder, the black momentum, you want to clean that off. If for some reason you let it set a little too long and it doesn't really want to come off well, you can also take a very damp, and I'm saying very slightly damp paper towel and just wipe it with that and that will take any ink off from your embossing. So can you see it? Isn't that, that interesting, right? It's pretty and you can see how the colors all really popped here on here with these bolder colors. Let me show you the one I did using this stamp. So here's this one. And when I got it done, I thought this would be really pretty on here, but what I found when I got it done is because there's a lot of this image is a line image, like the whole stem area. Once you put the stained mosaic on there, you kind of, that stem gets lost in the image and so all you're really seeing is these couple of leaves but they don't look like they're attached to anything and these flowers are very burst but again they don't really look like they're attached to anything so that's why i went with more of this all over pattern and the more solid images and i think that turned out better that way um, the other alternative i tried here and i'm calling this one a blooper too this one actually worked okay, but after I had the experience with the black lines, I thought, well, maybe I should just not do any black lines and not do the outline flower. And so this one was done with just um, the, the center part of the flower. And it's pretty, but if we look at the two side by side, I think I like the one with the the little bit of black around the flowers a little bit more. It just, if you look at those two coastal cabana flowers, this one's just got a little bit more depth than this one. But I don't know. What do you think? Leave me a comment and let me know which one you like best. Let me show you the card. 
Here's the card I made with this. I just matted it with a slightly larger countryside corner die. Um, inside I stamped a flower. This is not done with the technique, just this piece is the technique. This is embossed with the timeless type, I think it's time warm type or something. So that's my first card. Now I'm gonna show you a couple others. I said I had some I made that were, I used a different color than black. So this is the perched in a tree stamp. And I stamped this little bird as my focal point and colored him with Stampin' Blends. And then in this case, um, rather than using black for my mosaic, I used Knight of Navy because I have Knight of Navy matte here and here. And it just softens it up a little bit, but it's still dark enough that I think the mosaic um, looks really nice. So you can experiment with other colors. I originally, here's, here's another blooper. I originally had made a circular die cut after I colored him, and then I used my, my mosaic stamp. But when I stamped it, I was not really paying attention because I didn't realize I needed to, to where I placed the mosaics. And you can see here his eye is partially covered by one of the mosaic lines. So on this card, I made sure that I kept a larger piece of the mosaic over his head so that I didn't lose that detail around his eye because I thought that looked not as good as this. Let's just say that. So this was my other blooper. We all had bloopers, right? So I have two more cards to show you. This one is made with the two-tone flora stamp. And this stamp is does not have black lines. It's just two-step stamps. And I use Daffodil Delight with Crushed Curry. And then these are Gorgeous Grape. And I stamped off the background first, but they're very bright, intense colors. And I thought this turned out really pretty with that technique. That, that mosaic just adds a little bit of interest on there. And this is an easy little fun fold where the top just pops up and here I stamp some flowers. So that's that one. So then, so my next thing was, okay, I've been making all these um, focal points. How could I make an easier focal point than stamping and coloring and so on? Not that we don't like to stamp and color, but sometimes we're in a bit of a hurry, right? So I'm like, well, what if I did this over top of designer series paper? So here's an example of one where I used the fancy floor designer series paper, which is now sadly retired. Um, and I did the mosaic just over a piece of designer paper. So I'm gonna show you that. I have a little bit different piece I'm gonna to use today. I'm gonna to use this one. Um, but for this, all we have to do is again, ink up. Our, our mosaic stamp that we created. And again, ink it up good. I'm gonna pick it up because then I can see if I'm missing spots. The, the mosaic pieces can have a little bit of height variation sometimes, depending on how you stuck them down there. Um, so you kind of really gotta look good to make sure that you got those inked up very well. And I will bring in my, where to put my pads? Okay, we just had it, there it is. <laughs> Am I the only one that has that problem? I just have something and then I can't find it. Okay, so here's my other piece of fancy flora. And I've not done this one before, but let's go ahead um, this one, I can't quite cover my whole piece. My stamp isn't quite large enough, but that's all right. You'll get the idea and you'll see it. And we can trim it down if we desire afterwards. And again, I'm going to hold this and I'm, I'm pushing pretty hard because I want to make sure I get good coverage of the embossing powder. Pick it up, kind of rub it a little bit. It doesn't hurt. 
Let me pick that up. And here on the lighter colors, you can actually see the, the Versima now, right? It's much easier than on the dark colors. So let's go ahead and bring this little tray back and put embossing powder on here. And this one I will heat emboss and then ink for you just so we can see what it turns out to be like because I haven't seen it yet either. It'll be a surprise for both of us. Good surprise or a bad surprise, what do you think? I don't know. Okay, so tap that off. And I have my handy dandy little cake pan that I use for embossing that helps heat it from the bottom. Apologize for the noise. I will try to talk a little louder so you can hear me with the over the drawing of the heat tool. And let it warm up for just a second. I'm wondering what you think of this technique. Once you get your mosaic stamp done, it's actually pretty easy. And it just does add a little interest with that. So as soon as I see it turning clear, I'm moving on. And Kathy and I both pretty much tell you each and every time that we do embossing, don't over emboss. Um, if you overcook it, it kind of actually burns it off and flattens it out. And once you see it turning clear, just move on. If the spot is not fully embossed, you can always go back once you have a chance to pick it up and look at it. So let me look. I'm going to bring it up and see if I can see. Yeah, I think down in here I don't quite have it embossed. It still looks pretty pebbly and not, not clear. So I'm going to just go back. There it goes. Yep. Okay, I think, oh, I see another little spot I missed. I've become so cautious of not overheating it that I often have to go back and touch up some spots I missed. This corner doesn't look like it wants to heat. I may not have gotten enough um, person mark on that corner, too. That can be the case. I can give you a hint if if you have one of these, this is a Versa marker. Um, someone gave this to me years and years ago and it still works. It's just, it has a brush end on one end and a smaller end on the other. And if you have an area that didn't get well embossed, like maybe, I think you can see here, this is actually pretty wide. So I didn't really, and here's another spot. So you just take this marker and go in and add a little Versamark in areas where you wish you had gotten a little extra. It's a great little tool. Um, I'm sure they probably have them on Amazon or something. I, like I said, it was a gift to me, so I do not know where she got it. But... I'm probably going to have to get a new one at some point because it will dry out, I'm sure. So let me just add a little bit in those spots. While we're at it, we might as well do it right. Okay. Again, let it sit on there so it wants to stick. There's not a lot of Mark just in those couple of spots down here, you can see down here. So I'll just go in and heat this up quick. Okay. 
Okay. We are going to call that good. And that just goes, reinforces my point. When you lay this out, try to minimize your gaps because for some reason they do tend to want to spread out and it can be, you don't necessarily get all the way to the edge. You didn't push quite hard enough or didn't get it quite inked enough. Um, so keep those gaps small as you make your, your stamp. The other thing I would say is if you're going to be doing a lot of intricate images for your focal point, um, probably don't make these pieces as small as you would if you're going to have a bigger image because you're going to, the more, the smaller the pieces, the more black lines you're going to get from your mosaic, right? So you can always you can always make them smaller, but I would say error on the side of maybe a little bit bigger than you think. So I am now using Starry Sky. This is a Starry Sky in this paper, so I thought I'd pick that up. And it's it's a nice dark ink, so you can definitely see the lines. I have one more sample I'm going to show you where I used a couple of different colors on designer paper. Um, and I want to let you see those options. What I like about the dauber is I can always, it's easy to really darken things in a blending brush. You'd, you'd have a more difficult time with a blending brush. I think getting it as dark in these seams or in the creases of the mosaic. I don't know exactly what to call them. So, okay, let's start. I'm gonna take my paper, pull it on my paper towel. I'm gonna to clean this off as best I can with a dry one. And you can see there's some discoloration here. There's still starry sky ink on there. So I'm gonna grab that damp one that I had, find a clean spot, and just you'll be able to see the difference. Can you see how that brightens that up? It took that ink off from the embossing. Now this is very slightly damp. It is by no means wet. Um, you don't want it too wet because you don't want to get the card stuff that we started with, the white cards or the designer paper um, wet because it will tend to damage the water. Doesn't Designer paper and water are not a good mix, okay? So there is a focal point just made with designer series paper. And the card, I showed you this card. This is a little bit different, um, but it's that same technique. So this one is also with the two-tone floral stamp set. Uh, the inside, I just added a little bit of a strip. And of course, the envelope, don't leave your naked envelope sneak it. So let me flip this over. It's just bad on the other side now. This will be cleaner. I'll get a chance to bring all four of these cards in here. The one additional one I said I would show you is this one. This is another piece of designer paper from the um, Fancy Flora designer paper pack. And here you can see on this side of the design, I used early espresso ink. So it's a dark ink. And it really makes those little mosaic patterns pop. Over here, I used Calypso Coral. And you can see them, um, but certainly not with the same emphasis as you see them over here. But it's just another way to try it and play around, have fun, use your retired paper to play and practice on. Um, or take your favorite stamps and, and give it a try. So those are the two two-tone floral. This one here, I will post this later today on my blog, Fearless Stamp and Flare blog. And so it'll have all the cutting dimensions and written step-by-step -step tutorial for the stain mosaic. So that'll be up probably middle of the afternoon, I would say. Um, and here we have the, the bluebird. And I just painted him again on the inside and on the envelope as well. 
And then this was the first card I showed you. And stamp that on the inside. So that's kind of the the four cards. Get them out here, so hopefully you can see them all. They a nice, good shot. If I didn't have the envelopes on there, it might be a little more helpful, right? So, okay. I hope you like that. I'd love to know what you think about the um, the stain mosaic technique. Let me flip my camera back. All right. Um, I'd love to have you leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about that that um, particular technique. It's it's an old one, but sometimes we have to revive the old ones, right? And remind ourselves that, hey, I like to doing this back when, let's try it again. So that's what I did today. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, also, let me know which, which card was your favorite one. Do you have a favorite? And um, I like to know that too. So thank you for joining today. If you did enjoy the video, then please um, hit the like button. Uh, we'd love to have you subscribe to our channels and help our channels grow. So we appreciate you being here and have a great day. Kathy will be back next day, next week with something awesome. They always are. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be, but um, we know it'll be great. So I hope you come back next week and see what she's done. Have a great day.